Good morning, good Celebration morning, good City. Morning. Who's excited today? I'm excited today. I'm the excited joy today. of the Lord. Every day, just to wake up knowing, and it's not a knowing of one plus one equals two, but it's that intimate knowing of the Father's love for us, that He loves us, that He calls us sons. And together we are one. We are one in Him, with Him, seated in Christ at the right end of the Father. And as we praise the Father, as we worship our Lord Jesus and thank Him for His love, because He even said, What can separ separate you from my love? You can name anything anything in this world but nothing can separate you from that love which is in Christ Jesus and he is in us the fullness of Christ in us so let's worship him let the life of Christ just flow through you as you receive his love and as you impart it into the whole body let's do that Hallelujah. let's worship him praise you Jesus say hey, um Thank you, everybody, for being here. We love you out there and all, all over the world. Michael's back. We'll see him sometime soon. But first and foremost, <clears throat> it's Palm Sunday. Thank you, Jesus, for your, your love. We, we see you as you ride into Jerusalem, and we see the crowd. And we know that today is the day that the Lord has made. Let's be glad and rejoice in it and just uh, praise the Lord with song as we will now. Thank you.
crowd said. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. The crowd loved Jesus and Jesus loved the crowd. And with him we sang and danced. And with you we sing and we dance. We rejoice in this divine romance. We are born of the word. We're in your love. And with you we sing and we dance. We rejoice in this divine romance. We are born of the world we're in your love your perfect love thank you Jesus it's always good to know that he's inside us and dancing and singing with us as well that's always nice thank you Lord we praise you Jesus is above all names. You are Lord. Oh, we sing and praise and lift you up, our King. We are yours. There is power in your name, oh Jesus. There is power, power in your name. There is power in your name, O oh Jesus. There is power, power in your name. No fear, no lie can stand against us now. You are here, oh, the word, you come to silence every doubt, you are here, there is power in your name, oh Jesus, there is power, power in your name. One name, one name can save, one name breaks every chain, one name always, one name Jesus, one name, one name remains, one name we will proclaim, one name always, one name one name, one name can save, one name breaks every chain, one name always, one name Jesus, one name, one name remains, one name we will proclaim, one name always, there is power in your name oh jesus there is power power in your name there is power in your name oh jesus there is power power in your name jesus we love you lord he says
said, I'm the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And as sons, we know that. As sons, we have his power, his resurrection power. We have his living water, and we live in his blood. We praise his name, and we love his name, Jesus. There's power in your name, Jesus. Power in your name. One name. One name, one name can save. One name breaks every chain. One name always. One name, Jesus. One name, one name remains. One name we will proclaim. One name always. There is power in your name, oh Jesus. There is power, power in your name. There is power in your name, oh Jesus. There is power, power in your name. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you for your love, Jesus. Thank you for your power and your mercy, Jesus. And forever, and I, 
I still believe heaven for fish for me your blood mends the broken hearts right now your blood compels me to forgive right now your blood it transforms my mind right now your blood it brings the dead to life right now and I I still believe you're the same yesterday today and forever and I I still believe your blood is sufficient for me you're the higher power darkness cannot stand no longer bound to sin I am free you're the higher power darkness cannot stand no longer bound to sin I am free you're the higher power darkness cannot stand no longer bound to sin I am free and I I still believe you're the same yesterday today
And it's a blessing, Jesus, to know that we are that with you, Lord. Thank you for living in us. Thank you, Jesus. In the glory of your presence, I find rest for my In the depths of your love, I find a peace, thank you Jesus, that makes me whole. We love you Jesus. We love, we love. release this presence of the Lord through every part of your soul the resurrection power every part of your body thank you for the power Father thank you for the resurrection life that gives life to every joint. Any sickness in your body is being pushed out by the power of the resurrection life. Any fear, it's, it's living at the perfect love of your Father, Saratosh. Fear of death, you have the resurrection life in you. Thank you, Father, for the awareness of the power in us. Thank you for dead bones that come to life. We breathe your life on them. We praise you, Father. We thank you, Father. We worship you, Jesus. Thank you for trusting us. You are the word in us, and we are the word everywhere we go. Thank you, Father. 
praise you, Jesus. We love you, Father. We love you, Father, because you first loved us. And your love changes us. It transforms us. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Father. Why don't you greet one another and tell the other person, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You who are watching, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And we love you. We love you. We love one another. We love the body. If you haven't said hello to someone, we'll come after you. So you cannot run far. <laughs> okay. Let's come back. Everybody find your seat. If anyone has a testimony, any, anything that you want to impart, any revelation, any awareness that you've got this week, come on in the front. Michael, so good to see you. You're back in the flesh. <laughs> I'm sure you have a lot to share. Yes, come on up. It's your time. Time for testimonies. Welcome, welcome to me. Welcome to my country. Yes. Uh, well, uh, celebration here, I, I, all I can tell you is that the fruit of your oneness has reached out into Africa. The, the intercession that you do on Mondays when you're fasting to kill unbelief, like a big spear coming right down through the top of all those principalities in Africa. And countries... Uh, I mean, uh, Ghana, that we worked in for several years, all of a sudden just totally opened up. We got so much work over there, we can't handle it all. Thousands of sunship books going out, and that, that thing is so effective. We went over to Kenya, and in Kenya, uh, our brothers Stanley and Samuel, that many of you have met here and over in Romania <laughs> when they came, um, the Lord used them to open up doors to for all over Kenya. I was at a, uh, the last meeting there was uh, like, I don't know, three, four hundred pastors that this lady named Mercy, single lady, amazing ministry, and she came into, the, into Sonship about a year and a half, two years ago through these brothers, and she has hundreds and thousands. Actually, I went, I, there wasn't one meeting I went with her that was less than like 400 people except for the youth. Now that's like 15 to 25, and there was only 250 of those guys. 
all of them in the sunship. And then uh, pastors, these pastors conference, and she's got, she, I don't know, she's got a school of theology. She's got a, a regular uh, vocational school that she has done with hundreds of students. And then uh, a bunch of other ministries. Anyway, the Lord just used her. She's coming at everything she's doing. I mean, more, more, uh, more works from an individual person I've ever seen anywhere that didn't have a giant church, you know. But her church was about 500 people, and we got them going, and, and then the pastors, and then from there we went, we launched out, went to um, Burundi. Burundi is another place. And it was a really big church, the only big one in the city. And he came into Sonship, the pastor, through a, son, through a, through a, a Sonship book that Samuel had given them when they went to a deal. Their whole church came in. I mean, we had three meetings with a, with a large group of church, and then the, the youth group also filled up. The auditorium held about 500 people. I say auditorium. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this giant warehouse looking place and uh, just meeting after meeting uh, uh, so many people and from there we're now we're, we started to work in Somalia Tanzania is breaking out we're gonna go back over there in Ethiopia in Uganda all of this has opened up within the last year and uh, and people on the ground there, local people on the ground, taking it and going out and just getting all these other pastors involved. So that, what I was realizing was just that, that intercession of breaking the unbelief. Because one of the big unbeliefs around the world is this, all these little churches and ministries and organizations are all split. They're all divided off. Well, <clears throat> like in, in uh, Kenya, uh, uh, Dr. Mercy... Because from Celebration City, we have given her an honorary doctorate for lifetime for achievement. <laughs> and, and she's, I mean, she's got theologians, all these different guys, and doctors and stuff that come to her school. And now the whole foundation of that school is in sonship. And all, all I can say is that uh, thank God for all of you around the world, and especially here for the, the faith to stay in commitment to what we're doing. Remembering that every son that comes into, into glory, that's, that's, that's a vessel that God can actually use to pour life into the body. More life into the body because that life that's in us right here on the earth, the earth won't be able to hold us soon. The more this comes, the more the quicker we're going to get out of here. And everybody caught the vision. It was just wonderful. And I just thank you so much for your Faithfulness and uh, ability to send us over, you know, it's a, quite a long trip and and there's just more to come. That's all I got to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Amen. Any other testimonies? Yeah, I have another one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to give this. I already gave this to... Uh, to uh, 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 Grim, but um, you know his testimony about about um, asthma, and so uh, amongst these pastors, and this was like Monday or Tuesday, we had this big giant meetings for two days. We had them for two days, and it was over five hundred of them, and all of them have churches. All of them, some of them big, some of them little, but uh, Mercy had the uh, anointing to draw them together. To come together and and uh, get it, I, I can't explain it all, but later. All right, so I'm telling the testimony about about Grim getting healed from asthma. Okay, amazing testimony. So right before I left, a couple hours, uh, uh, one day, then the next day, the meeting came, and Mercy uh, called me and said, "I just heard from one of the pastors who's um, uh, had asthma." For 35 years, he had to take a different kind of medicine at night and one in the morning. And he woke up, he said he didn't, he just totally got healed from that testimony. That's awesome. Um, last week, 
I um, I went into a for the sharper knives, one of those businesses, and uh, to get some knives sharpened. And um, it was towards closing, so it was just me and the owner. Um, so we started talking, and out of this mouth, out of this guy's mouth, was coming only death. Um, he was seven year, seven years old, and all he would say is, "I'll die." of a heart attack or a stroke or just death coming out of his mouth. And I said, do you ever wondered how much power you were to have? And um, he looked strange at me. <laughs> but as we, were, as we were talking, we came to the subject of God. And he said, I don't know if I believe in God. I don't know what to make of him. He said, my wife is Christian. Uh, she goes to church. She prays. Every Sunday she asks me if I want to go with her, and I said no. As a child, I was dragged to church, and I hated it. I hated the church. I hated people. What They're just hypocrites. And um, he was a police officer before, and he said, I've seen so much evil in this world that I, I don't know what to believe. And he said, but I wonder one thing. There are so many violent around me, but one thing I wonder is how come I never died? And I said, did you wonder that they actually God has a purpose for your life? And um, as I was sharing sonship with him, um, he I said, don't go by what the church was telling you, your experience as a kid about God, but want just to know him as a person, as that intimate relationship with him. I know him. He lives in me, and he's real. So he said, are you telling me that God sent you here so I can meet him through you? He didn't say that I was crazy that God lived in me. He knew it right away. So he blessed me as well. And he received, like, that's what we're looking for, the seeds and everything that we intercede for all these sons to come into glory. And, yeah, this whole world be, will, will be fu filled by the sons. And that's what the, all creation is waiting for. So praise God for that. If there's... No more testimonies. Let's get into giving. And um, thank you, Mano. <clears throat> Let's say these words together. Father, we thank you for souls being saved, the sons of God revealed, miracles and healing in abundance, increase of the dominion of life, Grace and favor multiply to us. We give with joy for the kingdom. The mountain of luck is removed. We give and we receive. And we know that the Father is all about increasing and multiplying. Um, I was reading the when he was talking to them multitude of people where there were 5,000 uh, people and what did the um, disciples said said okay we don't have anything to feed these people with let's just send them away I mean the source was right there with them but to them they didn't see it and Jesus said what do you have okay we have five loaves and two fish well bring them to me and not only did he had everybody fed, but also there was over. And that's how it is. Whatever you have, whatever seed you plant, he meets all your needs that you will have sufficient, but also over for good works. So name the seed when you plant the seed, because that's what you will reap. And he works in your soul to prepare you for the increase where he wants to bless you and where he, he, you should bless other people. So let's do that. Let's thank the Father for every seed that is being planted. 
that is being planted in good work. Thank you, Father. You multiply it, and we praise you for it. We receive it. We give. Amen. Okay, let's get into the word. Galatians 4, 4, 7 says, But when the fullness of time has come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Romans eight fourteen sixteen, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you do not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you receive the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So why the soul? What, why does the Father want our soul? And then... If we go from the beginning, we were in him. Before the foundation of the earth, we were in him. Because he is the beginning and he is the end. And to him, because he's outside of time, everything gets completed. And everything that all, all of our days are written already in the book. So, I mean... When you think about God, the infinite, majestic, that he can do anything, why not just make everything new? He can. Make a new world. You receive Christ, bam, you're new. So why does he want our soul? When he created Adam, he created him with the soul. That's how he started. And when Adam sinned, his soul was plugged into the self. When we are born of him, into him, so our spirit, our soul gets plugged into the spirit where it gets directly life from the spirit. It gets direction from the spirit that goes through our soul. So what was the father's purpose from the beginning? What was his plan? His purpose was the word to be born. God to become flesh. God to give birth to God. And um, so he started with the Adam, with the soul. And then if you look at everything that he created, he created Adam and he created everything just for that time when Christ to be born and he created the animals to give birth he created Eve to give birth so he gave give an example how it is to be to be birth he didn't want God to be created he wanted God to be birth so he was the first seed that was that was born so when he says here in the fullness of time, when Mary had to, even her soul had to be prepared 
and build up for the time when the angel will come and say, hey, this is the time you'll give birth to the Son of God for her to receive the word and be able to, to receive what the Father has for her to give birth to the first seed. What he wanted through Christ, because he was the first seed, what he wanted through Christ is to do something new, something that's never been existed before, something that will multiply more of him, more of who he is. Next. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> so we are born of God, right? We are born, born. His spirit, we are born of Him. Was born of flesh, His flesh. Was born of spirit, His spirit. You are spirit. You are born of God, your spirit. Born of a giraffe is a giraffe, born of a dog is a dog, born of a cat is a cat, right? So, God is spirit. Whoever uh, worships God, worships Him in spirit and in truth, right? So, um, our true, foremost, first identity is spirit. We are spirit. We have a soul that lives in this flesh. Now, our soul is being transformed, conformed to look like the spirit. Our soul is mind, will, emotions. Mind, will, emotions, our soul taking it from zero since the moment we were born physically in this earth, on this earth, it was flooded, flooded to the max with everything but God. You turn on the TV, full of seeds of junk. Confirm to the world. Everything you got into your soul, most of the teaching from your parents were based on the world's principles, not based on the word's principles. Because you try to do the word, it doesn't work, and you're like, well, brother, it's written, but it's not quite like that on the ground. Everybody has the same story. They try a little bit and they give up. So what do they teach the, their kids? The same thing. Yeah, this is the story in the Bible. He took the stone, Goliath died. But you cannot go to that job. You don't have the training for that job. You cannot go against that Goliath. You got to go to do more school. You got to see? This is what the Word says, but on the ground is different. So we got flooded in our soul with everything else but the pure truth. And now we get to this point and we understand what Jesus said. You are spirit. You are exactly like me. You are part of me. You are one with me. You are a section of me. You are one with the Spirit of God. You are one with the Lord. Your spirit is absolutely one with the Father. But your soul has to be confirmed, transformed from all those junk seeds to the truth. So now you take the truth and you put it in your soul and you work on it. And you unplug, unplug, pluck out whatever was before. That's not in the Word. You read something in the Word? Well, if you believe, everything is possible to you who believe. Well, I believed that nothing happened. Then I really believed. Well, between your story that you really believed and what the Word says, who do you think I trust more? Your story that you said that you really, really believed and it didn't happen? Or the Word? Well, between you and your story and the Word, I with the word until I see this happening every day of my life that I say I believe it happens right then so <clears throat> we were under the law we were born of a woman right everything was we are sons and he sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts crying out Abba, Father. Now, it says, because you are sons. What do you mean? 
Well, the moment you believed in him, you were five, you were seven, it doesn't matter when. You were born again right then. Because you are sons, you received the Spirit. Now, now the Spirit in our soul, our soul is crying out, Abba, Father. The soul is waking up, it's like, oh, so I'm not, a, I'm not just, just a slave here? I'm not just a, no. oh, so I'm a son, oh, daddy, daddy. Abba means daddy. You know, I guess it's Hebrew or something, right? Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, you are an heir of God through Christ. Now, this 14 through 16, it says, For as many are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. This is such a tricky deal. Because like, but I don't hear the Spirit. I have a decision to make and I don't hear. Is it left? Is it right? I don't, I don't hear it. I don't know what to do. Left, right, left. <laughs> like, I don't think I'm led by the Spirit. I don't know if I'm a son. Right? Because from coming from religion, that's the being, being led by the Spirit. It's like the Holy Spirit. I have heard a voice and I saw the vision. It's a left. That's what they think is the leading of the Spirit, which is a misunderstanding completely. Which one is harder to believe, right? No, which one is easier to believe? That you are a son or that you are led by the Spirit? Which one is easier for a natural mind? I'm a son. You read in the scripture, you are born of God, you are born of the Spirit, born of the incorruptible seed, who is born of God cannot sin, does not sin because the seed remains in him, nothing. So it's easier to believe you are a son. It's harder to believe they are led by the Spirit. For as many as are led by the Spirit, these are the sons of God. You are the sons, you've got to believe the first part, you are led by the Spirit. You believe the easier one, then you believe the other section of the verse. You are led by the Spirit. Oh, sometimes you make some mistakes, that's fine. You get corrected, it's fine, it's okay. No, not an issue, not a problem. But you are led by the Spirit. Every decision you make, you make it knowing that you are son. You want to make a left, you make a left. If the Lord doesn't want you to make a left, He's going to tell you very clearly, like a father tells his son. You want him to vacuum, you're going to tell him, hey, this is the vacuum right here. Take it, and this is how you do it. Right? I want you to start from that wall and come all the way here. You got it? It's your responsibility as a father to make sure the son gets it, that this is the vacuum, this is how you turn it on, and you vacuum from left to right or from right to left, and this is how you do it. If he wants you to do something very specifically, it's his duty, it's his job to make sure you get it. If he doesn't tell you something very specifically, he wants you to do what you want to do by faith. You want to make a left, you make a left by faith. If he tells you, hey, don't make a left, it's not good. Then you know and you obey. Oh, you don't obey, it's fine. You smash your head and it's like, oh, Father, next time I'm going to listen. It's fine, it's okay. You're learning, no, no issues. Right? But this is, you are a son, you are led by the Spirit. You want to make a right? After a while you learn, you get more of the Word in you, it grows in you, you know why not to make a left? Because the Father says in the Word, in 22,732 places, not to make that left. After a while, you get it, right? But He wants you to go by faith. Now, <clears throat> the Spirit Himself, that's the Holy Spirit, right? Bears witness with our spirit. That we are sons of God. If you don't know for sure, you know for a fact the Spirit bears witness with your spirit that you are a son. It's the Holy Spirit saying you are a son. It's not based on what you do. It's not based on the mistakes or the good things you've done. You are a son. You are born of him. That's it. If someone has a son born of him or a mother has a son or a daughter, right? Whatever that daughter does, it doesn't make her 
born of the neighbor. He's still born of her. That's it. If the daughter is like legit or is a mess her whole life, is born of her, that's it. It doesn't change the nature. The same thing with us. Now, obviously, the Father doesn't want us to mess it up and smash our head from every wall. That's stupidity. He wants us to be confirmed. Right? So let's say these words together. My spirit is born of God and my soul is adopted. I want to read one more verse. <clears throat> Romans 8, 29, 20, 29. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be confirmed, conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. How many people I've heard. But you read the gospel, right? And it was the, 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 the example she gave. 5,000 men, right? With a bunch of other people, kids and women. Yeah, brother, but that was Jesus multiplying the bread. And we are just, we're just, that was Jesus. We're just, maybe, maybe if we get to the level of Peter or John. No. He's the first born among many brethren. So let's say you have a giraffe, and you have a firstborn of a giraffe, and then you have another siblings of the giraffe, born of the same giraffe. Is it the same nature there? It's absolutely the same nature. Yes, the firstborn has got, he's got it right, he's got the experience, he's training the other ones, that's fine. But it's the same nature. When you read the scriptures, you don't read like, oh yeah, brother, but that was Jesus, that's not us. Well, that's you. Every time you read in the scripture, Jesus, that's you. He's the firstborn among many brethren. The life we live right now, we live by his faith, and he's the one living right now. That's you in the scripture. He could do it, you can do it. It's not going to work right away, maybe. You try something, it's not like, that's fine. We're going to work on it. Read, uh, maybe you should listen to Sephora's uh, sermon from like two Fridays ago about the seed. The word is the seed and you work the seed in your soul. It's not like you, you eat of, of the seed. The seed is not meant to be eaten, but to be sown. So you work on it, but when you're reading the scripture, you put yourself in Jesus' shoes because he's your older brother. As I said, every decision we make, we make by faith. We mess it up, we learn. That's fine. That's okay. Why? We know that all things work together for good. It doesn't say everything. No, no, that's not what it says. Well, this mistake, it doesn't... No, this mistake with that thing, with this thing, together is going to get good. People are like, but this very thing is not working. No, not this very one. Along with this, and with this, and with this, all the puzzles together. Now you see, oh, yeah. Because they get, they get tripped into this. Like, but I don't see how this, no, it's this along with that, all together work for the good. We've got to read it like it said. All things work together for good. Right? Now. Um, I would like to invite my beautiful, amazing, awesome son of God. Do, and do not be conformed. Do not allow yourself. Do not permit yourself. Living in this world, the default is conformity to the world. The default is think this way, feel this way, understand this way, do this. And this is saying, Paul is saying, do not allow yourself. Do not permit yourself to be fashioned and fit into the mold of the world, right? We're looking at a word conform. Conform means 
to be fashioned into, to be molded into. Kind of like kindergarten, you, we had those toys and you would shove clay in them and you'd make shapes and animals conformed. Here's your paradigm, here's your structure, you're going to fit into this mold. The world tells us plenty, how to think, how to feel, how to respond to sickness, how to respond to tragedy, how to respond. It has already built a mold for us. And Paul is saying, do not let yourself just be led like a sheep to the slaughter, right? Do not allow yourself. We have the power to choose not to be conformed, not to fit that mold. That mold, what is it built off of? That mold in and itself, when it was originally constructed, was built based on death, was built based on the old man, was built based on lack of the spirit, was built based on sin. We have, based on the curse, we have no relationship to that anymore. The blood of Christ has come in, has separated the old man from the new creation. We have no associ association with that. Why would we begin to develop thoughts and patterns and ways of thinking according to a mold that was originally made based on death and sin and total separation? It doesn't make sense, does it? And yet we do it so easily. And this is where the light of the word comes in to say, hey, attention. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, because this is what the pattern looks like, right? To this world. But be transformed. Transformed. I love this word. So transformed, and, and you guys have heard this, but um, the original Greek is metamorpho. What does that sound like? What word does that sound like? Metamorphosis. You hear metamorphosis. What's the next thing you think of? Butterfly. Caterpillar to butterfly, right? And I, I, I love that it says, so do not be conformed to this world, but, but opposite direction, change directions. There is a pattern that is, is trending in the world, and then Paul's like, but, so negate everything, cancel everything that has come before what I just said, but repent, turn, turn your thinking, be transformed. So be transformed, be changed, be metamorphosized. That transformation from a caterpillar to a butterfly, once it's become a butterfly, can it go back to being a caterpillar? We're talking total structure change. We're talking item A totally changed into item B. No more similarities, no more ways. I mean, we have a butterfly, or excuse me, a caterpillar barely crawling along compared to a butterfly that's soaring miles upon miles. They move a different way, they eat a different way. There's no association, there's no more similarity. That is the transformation that the Word of God is bringing into us. That is the life of, of being conformed to the image of Christ, not to the world, that is happening within us, that is happening in our soul. And this transformation, if you guys didn't catch from the beginning, we're talking about the soul being adopted, the soul being transformed, okay? Like, like Claude and Esty mentioned, when we get born again, the spirit, the spirit doesn't need to be changed into anything else. The spirit simply wasn't. The spirit did not exist. We were dead to God. We were simply a soul living in a body. We were two-thirds just walking around like dead men, right? Let the dead go bury their dead, Jesus says, okay? We get born again. That faith is increased in us to believe on the name of the Lord Jesus, and pop, there goes the spirit. We have the spirit. We are three parts. We are whole now. So, the spirit was dead, now it's alive. It's, it's like it was off, now the light switch went on. That doesn't need any change. It's the soul that needs change. It's the soul that needs to be transformed from one thing, one structure, one thing into another. And I think, what, what would that be? Well, from the old man into the new man, right? We're no longer an old creation, we're a new creation, which is what we are in the spirit, identical to Christ, etc. Things that we've heard time and again, but you guys, this is the foundation. This is why we're coming back to this. This is simply the Destiny Seminar. It's on the Celebration City website, all these parts, all these verses. We're just coming back to it because this is, this is vitally useful. This is the stuff that changes our foundation, changes, and you guys, it has to start in the soul because Oftentimes we get caught up and we want that miracle. We want that external thing. I want that, I want that, I want that. But that does not come until it first comes through the process of your soul being convinced that that is the truth. If that is not your truth, if that is not the truth in the word made flesh in your soul, in the way you think and, dis and decide and feel and respond and your reflexes, it is not going to happen in the physical. It doesn't work like that. It is established in the spirit, 
by the word of God, the seed that we talked about a couple Fridays ago, you bring it in, you work it, it comes to life. Therefore, it affects your body, it affects your relationships, it affects the environment, it affects creation, right? Creation, waiting, longing, oh my goodness, would you guys wake up and realize who you are already? Because once you're blessed, we get to be blessed too. We receive that eternal life, but we have to receive the eternal life from the Spirit first can't give it out if we don't have it within ourselves. So this transformation of the soul from the old man to the new man. And I love the fact that um, <laughs> in a way, you know, Paul's talking here and he says, okay, this is the pattern of the world, but be transformed, okay? It's like the river full of salmon, just floating along all in the, dis in the same direction. The moment you decide, hey, wait a minute, I am not going to fit the mold of the world. I'm going to change the way I think according to the words of Christ. You are going uphill, okay? You are going against the current. You are a non-conformist, right? You conform, you follow the pattern, do not be conformed. You are stepping out of that. You are a non-conformist. You are a rebel. And right now, the current ruler is the prince of the power of the air, okay? He stole the authority, and he's doing his little deal. Do you think he's going to like that you're stepping out of the stream? I'm asking. No. So is it going to be easy to transform your mind? No. Let's be real. But is it worth it? Is it a pearl of great price? It is, a, is it a treasure that's been hidden and it's worth it to sell everything you have to gain it? Absolutely. Absolutely. But I'm saying we should not be surprised at resistance that we get. And yeah, maybe initially we're kind of like working against it, but hey, that little mustard seed grows and grows and grows until it's a ginormous mustard tree where the, the birds come and they make their nests. That thing is resilient. That thing has a trunk of, I don't know. How, I mean, there does come a point. So I want to encourage us to say, we're not going to have to be uh, uh, working against it the whole time. There does come a point of strength, but it's that transformation is happening and does have to happen before we're, we're steadfast and we're established. We're a well-established tree where nothing can move us and nothing can shake us and we can um, and be resilient. So I just, I love that. A complete change of form from one substance into another. And that change is so complete that you can't have the butterfly go back to being a caterpillar. You can't have a fully grown mustard tree go back into being a seed, right? It starts there, but it's glory to glory to glory to glory. Put your hand on the plow. Don't look back. Let faith draw you forward, right? That seed is the substance. It is the proof of everything that you hope for, of everything that you cannot yet see, but it is there. It's proof. So let that faith draw you to it, draw you to it, draw you to it. And you know, the power of this word is that of being transformed, okay? Object A into object B, totally different thing. Because sometimes a lot of us use this excuse, well, I've always been like this, you know? I'm, I'm, um, I'm a negative Nelly. I just can't, you know, the cup is always half empty. I can't, I can't help it. Um, I have opinions. I'm very opinionated about everything. I complain about everything. It doesn't matter. We have no excuses in the Lord because the Lord is like, I don't care what you were. I completely change you into a new thing, right? You're opinionated this and that, you become transformed into a heart full of thanksgiving and praise. Um, you're a negative Nelly, you become one full of hope. So it, the Holy Spirit, he's a tough coach, okay? He's a comforter, but he's our coach. He is the one that's with us on the ground while we're on the earth running this race for the prize that we are going to get. But He's, he's not going to let up on us. He's like, pick it up, let's go. Nope, no excuses, no excuses. Yes, he's a perfect coach, so he knows when to be easy, but he also knows when to light a fire under us. And he, he loves us too much, and he knows all that we've been destined to become, the place where we came from and the place that we're being transformed to go back into, this perfection of the Spirit, and it's too precious. And he's not going to compromise nor should he, and I'm glad he doesn't compromise. I'm glad that he is faithful, even when we sometimes find ourselves faithless, right? We get weary, and he comes right in there, picks us up, but uh, no excuses, and that's awesome. That's a wonderful thing. I'm glad we don't have excuses. And, and I, I want to touch on one thing, if I may, because this is something that I struggled with, and um, maybe it's something that has come across your mind. So the issue is this. Okay, Lord, conform to you, conform to you. So what, we're all just like, blobs of you and I have no personality, I have no uniqueness, I just, I'm in you and 
okay, all of us are vanilla and that's, that, that's it. And if, if that thought's ever crossed your mind, it's, it's quite the opposite, what I mean by that. Let me illustrate with this. So before I married Claude, okay, again, marriage being a type and shadow of Christ and the church, okay? Before I met Claude, yeah, I was, I was content, I was my happy self, whatever. But I can honestly say I have never been more myself, I have never been more free than since I have married Claude. Being loved by him, being in a, in a marriage that exemplifies Christ in the church has freed me to be more myself and to unlock aspects of my personality and of who I am and of my strengths and tendencies more than I've ever had before. So there's an aspect of when you come into Christ, his blood frees you from the burden and the oppression of sin and the old man so that you can actually be everything and truly be who he made you to be truly be that full fullest expression of a beautiful soul that is a part of christ you are more free you are more free to be yourself than you have ever been because all the bondage of death and sin and decay he's gotten rid of and he's like now you can truly be glorious now you can truly be express everything that i am in and through you because sin doesn't oppress you sin doesn't limit you anymore so it's something to be excited. He purifies us. We are more ourselves through the blood of Christ and being conformed to his image than maybe what the world would try to mess with our thinking and say, okay, so you're just gonna become some robot of some kind, right? So, uh, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, the renovation of your mind. When you hear renovation, what do you guys think of? Remodel. Say again? Remodeling, anything else? Old house, new house. old house, new house, right? So there's a restructuring. There's an aspect of the old being gone, the old being done away with, and the new coming in, um, which includes our old ways of thinking, which includes, includes our carnal instincts, our carnal reflexes. I so some definitions of this renovation, the renewing of the mind. To restore, restore to a good condition. So we started in the Garden of Eden, we were in a good condition. So we are being restored back to a righteousness conscious. Right now, we are redeemed, but there is still the presence of a sin consciousness. We still operate by the tree of knowledge of good and evil in a lot of aspects. So to be restored is to be put back to where you started, the renewing of your mind, in the place where you think, in the place where you judge and, and discern and understand, understanding, right? It is being recalibrated to go back to the tree of life. It is being recalibrated where you are thinking and perceiving the world around you through a righteousness consciousness, where sin is not an issue anymore, where you can truly be like, man, I'm free from sin. Sin has been dealt with. It is not an enemy that I have to fight. Yes, I'm aware that it's in my members so that I'm not deceived by it, so that I can you know, take the stance that I need to take, but I live, you know, and I love that verse, I think it's in Titus, to the pure, all things are pure. I mean, we're talking innocence. We're talking, you're free. You can just walk through life because Christ has set you free and you see things through purity, you see things through discernment. Um, and something that helped set me free quite a bit, you know, that seed is still growing. Um, it's, it's an aspect that Claude touched on, uh, this idea of like, oh, I gotta make a decision, left or right, left or right. So to make a decision left or right, yes or no, positive or negative, those are the tree of knowledge, right? Two plus and minus, good and bad, da 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 So you're in that tree of knowledge and you're like, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know. He's taken us out of that. Our source is not the tree of knowledge. Our source is the tree of life. So now the only question you have to ask yourself is, am I making this decision by faith? Is it based on a promise? Because whether it is left or right, positive, that doesn't matter anymore. It's irrelevant. That is the tree of knowledge. The, the, the rest that you have, the freedom that you have in the Lord now is that, okay, Father, as much as I've understood up until this point, your word says that I have this situation, so I'm going to act in this situation based on that. Here I go. And he'll cover, grace covers, his love covers, because what pleases him is that you're making that step according to a promise, according to an aspect of your relationship with him, based on trusting him, his character, who he is. And I think that brings us a tremendous amount of freedom. We're not caught up and tangled up in the branches of, <laughs> did, did I do good, did I? Hey, peace, I did it in rest, according to faith, I'm free. 
the angels got me, my father has me, he causes all of these things. Once I'm in this realm, he, everything that I do, he'll make it all work together for my good because I love him and I love him because he first loved me. So I'm, I'm guaranteed that and I've been called according to his purpose. I was in him before the foundation of the world. I've been predestined in him, right? And all of this is so important for us because the soul transformation, this et cetera, et cetera, that's why we're on the earth or one of the aspects, right? In heaven, in him before the foundation, our soul didn't need any transformation. Then why are we you know, wasting our time down here, quote unquote? This is a huge chunk of it. This is the dominion that we've been given. He's given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. He's given us all the tools we need. He's like, okay, let's go. I'm co-laboring with you. Let's do this. So, <clears throat> uh, renovation. The, coming back into righteousness consciousness. A new mindset, not a sin consciousness. Uh, and it, this renovation, this renewing of the mind is to make new again. From the carnal mind to the mind of Christ. No more carnal thinking, carnal patterns, but the mind of Christ. By the renewing of your mind, and, and your mind is the place, and I mentioned it a moment ago, this is the place where you judge. It's the place you determine things. It's the place where you have understanding. You have your intellect. It's your mode of thinking, your thoughts, your feelings, purposes, desires. And, and understanding is, it's a, key, it's a key piece because you can't keep a word, you can't keep a seed you know, a verse, a promise that you read without having some understanding. Understanding is what helps keep it down there. And so sometimes, you know, it's why we come up here and we, an aspect of imparting the kingdom is, uh, is imparting a, a teaching, if you will, because this gives you understanding. It helps you understand how the kingdom functions so that you can be like, okay, I get it. So, you know, you put that in there and then you can go, you know, and, and work with the pieces and work with the puzzle pieces. So it helps, it's beneficial, it's important. And the last part of this verse, so be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove, I love this, that you may prove, that you may test, that you may examine, that you may scrutinize, to test and see whether a thing is genuine or not, okay? To, so we go through this process, we gain the mind of Christ so that now we are equipped to go out and prove and show genuine the promises of the Lord. And this there's really no other way to do it through trial and error, okay? To test, to prove it. We're kind of talking about like a science experiment, if you will, okay? You have a hypothesis, you do a certain number of steps, and you see if you get the result. So there is, there's a working out of it. There's a trial and error, but you do it now having the mind of Christ being renewed. Okay, the mind has been renewed in a certain area, so now I'm going to work it out and prove that the word of God is true. It's real. It's alive. It has an effect in my life. And again, this is no longer from a carnal mind, but from the mind of Christ. This is where the transformation from one thing into a completely different thing has happened, right? And it's kind of like uh, that analogy that we've heard with riding the bike, okay? You have the promise of riding a bike, you have the vision of it, you've, it's been described to you, you know that other kids your age can do it, et cetera, et cetera. But now you have to prove that, yes, I, as a eight-year-old kid, whatever, can get on a bike and pedal and ride the bike. You have to prove it. It has to be worked out. And so that's what we do. Here I am, a son of God. I have the mind of Christ. Certain things have been, certain things, everything has been granted to me. So now I'm going to get on the bike and prove it. Okay? Trial and error. Are you going to fall off the bike? Sure. But that's okay. You get back up. You learn. You adjust. You keep going. And he makes all things work together for our good. And with this renewed mind, with the mind of Christ, we now seek out to prove, to demonstrate the kingdom of God through us. That's the opportunity that we're given. From the spirit into our soul, it's a seed that grows into a tree, gives that fruit. We eat of the fruit, we can impart it to others. And it says here, may prove what is that good, and, or excuse me, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, perfect will of God. We have three aspects of the will of God. Um, I just want to touch on this. The good will of God, it's quite simple. It's, it's simply the useful, the pleasant, and agreeable will of God. Okay, that sounds pretty good. But I just want to compare this to the last one, the perfect will of God. The perfect will of God brought to its end, finished, complete, wanting nothing, fully grown. Tree, or sound familiar? Full age, mature, 
right? And so there are aspects of the will of God that we work through proving as our mind is renewed, okay? We start proving the good will of God. It's pleasant, it's acceptable, it works, it's true, but then we go on to greater glory and greater perfection. We get to prove the perfect will of God, complete, lacking nothing, um, the whole package. And that's, that's what Christ did. He proved the perfect will of God, right? And just as he is, so are we on the earth, growing, um, growing in wisdom and in favor. Is that growing in wisdom and in favor? And glory to glory. I mean, you guys, it's glory to glory. It's an awesome thing. So it's awesome, praise the Lord, that our soul is indeed being transformed. One thing into a totally beautiful, glorious new thing. Amen. <clears throat> I am going to fish some scriptures out of the next slide. I, turn me up a little bit. I am going to fish one of these scriptures. Where are you? Da, da, da. Oh, Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. Have been. Not going to be. The word says, have been. So if sometimes in my life, I'm aware of things that don't quite line up with the word. Maybe they contradict. Maybe it doesn't quite have the correlation. Where is the issue? Is it in the word? Or is it in here? I would bravely tell you that it's probably in here the word is complete it's perfect so in the renewing of our mind sometimes there can seem to be a a struggle a fight you know you got the fight of faith that you're working on this end and then you got the old man on this end and you're trying to keep him down and you're trying to get him back on the cross because for some reason he keeps getting off but I would bring you to the verse that we just read that says, I have been. It's done. So then where would this fight actually be? If in reality, my man has died, my old man has died, he has been crucified, he has been buried, where am I finding myself in this place of struggle? And I would bring you to the mind. In the Old Testament, a very interesting thing happened. You know, they sinned, they fell, and God incorporates this process of bringing a sacrifice to atone for the sins. Right? You made a m mistake, you made a sin, <laughs> you sinned. The natural penalty for sin was death. And so you took a live animal and you killed the animal which substituted your death. It died for your mistake. The only problem with the Old Testament is that those sacrifices were not perfect. It didn't do one thing. And that is to cleanse your consciousness of the sin. It took away the penalty, but it still left something inside of you, a memory, a... a a piece of that, a remembrance of that sin. And I would tell you that this is the struggle, this is the fight between what he says, who I am, and what I remember about myself. The issue is in the mind, it's in the conscious. But the perfect sacrifice of Christ not only took away the penalty, not only made everything okay, brought us into resurrection life, but also wiped our consciousness of the sin. It took away the remembrance. It took away the, the stain that was left behind. The enemy, known as the accuser of the brethren, has one very important task. As an accuser, if you've ever been in court, his job is to bring forth evidence to try to convict you and to make you guilty. 
A definition of consciousness, as I have just pleasantly found, it says that it is the fact. It disappeared. The fact of awareness by the mind of itself and of the world. That's your consciousness. The fact of. And so you have the accuser of the brethren presenting evidence of what we did, and you did this, and you did that, and this happened, and this happened, and this happened, and this happened. But we have one who advocates on our behalf. And what I would like to point out is that the accuser does not bring facts. The one who says what is fact and what is not is the judge. And the judge has deemed you righteous. He's deemed you forgiven. He's deemed the perfect sacrifice enough to take everything away that hindered you, that blotted you, that caused you pain, the, the sin, the disease, the curse, everything is gone. And so because it's gone, there is no more right for the consciousness to say otherwise. There is no right for an accuser. There is no right for anyone to contradict what the mind of Christ says. What the word of God says. What he says within me. What his spirit together with my spirit testifies about me and who I am and what I have done. It is gone. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. This is our mind. It's done. We do not identify that person does not exist in the mind of God, in the mind of Christ. The old man does not exist anymore. What you did or once did or maybe you'll do tomorrow does not exist for him outside of time and space. He does not see it. Through the blood, through the perfect sacrifice, he cannot see it. And so to allow our consciousness to testify contrary to the sacrifice of Christ and to the work of Christ and to the work of the blood is foolish. And it is to have no place in us. No place. No place. The carnal mind, <clears throat> for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it does not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. It cannot compute, it cannot relate, it can't obey, it cannot follow, it cannot have faith. It cannot do anything except death. <laughs> the world, the system... Our awareness is not to be of our own consciousness, of the world, of the... No. It's of him. It's of Christ. And what's very interesting is in this verse, Ephesians 4.23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And I found it very odd that it did not say in the mind of the spirit. Why in the spirit of your mind? Because the spirit is in you. It's not somewhere far that needs to be attained I don't have to climb into heaven and there I find the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is in you. It's just a matter of receiving. I don't have to go and find the mind of Christ. I don't have to go and find the provision. I don't have to go and find the promises. It's in me. His faith, I don't have to go and find. It's in me. He put it with the Holy Spirit. Don't you know that you are the temple? If even in the, in the Old Testament, God was in the temple, in the holies of holies, where would you be going into the tribes and into the foothills to find him if this is where he was? So if he's in you, where are you going and where are you, are you looking to find him? He's in you. Let this mind be in you, that he is in you. He's right here. Regardless of anything mistakes, oh, I did this, oh, I said that. It does not matter. It does not change. It does not alter the sacrifice. It does not spoil the sacrifice. It does not negate the sacrifice. It is, and it's done, and it's in you, and you are it. Think this. Let this be the truth. Let this be your reality. Let this be your consciousness. 
let this be the fact of your consciousness that I no longer live and he lives in me. He is my life. First Corinthians, we'll touch this. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. This is the truth. It's been given to you. It's inside of you. It is not merit-based. It is not work-based. It is strictly faith. Yes and amen. It's mine, I believe. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, uh, one thing I can say is that you people here are very quiet. And this... Uh, the, the sound in here is like, okay, just kind of, it's like too low. <laughs> Some of you have been overseas and seen these other churches. I mean loud, loud. When I would go in and they're, they're doing all their worship stuff, I'd have to sit way in the back or out the front door in order to be able to handle it. Okay, so as, as we started off and we had a little sweet voice and then, this, this brother here was a little sweet, and then Mama comes up, and she's pumping it in. Now it's pumping it in. Now I'm going to really pump it in, okay? So in talking, we have the truth, okay? And, and what you said is, why are you looking somewhere? Why are you looking? Why are you going there looking for What When he's right there in you. This is a big problem, big problem. Thinking that you don't have something, you got to go find it. You got to go online. You got to listen to this guy talk and that guy talk and that guy talk. And <laughs> here's the deal your mind. Actually believing the truth. Okay, this fasting against unbelief, see, that unbelief is the big stronghold of the carnal mind because the carnal mind will accept oh yeah that's the fact but won't believe it okay now you know exactly what i'm talking about it's cold out there and yet you accept the fact and then here's this brother here with a t-shirt on <laughs> you accept the fact <laughs> okay you go over there <laughs> here's the truth you have power. Yes. You have power. Amen. Now, he is alive in you both to will and to do. Will and to do. That is an operation of power. You have power. Why don't you believe it? Why are you still looking for it? Okay? Because of that stronghold. Okay? We can know the truth. We can be set free in our minds knowing, knowing, knowing the truth, but he's in us to will to do. You have the power to change the circumstances of your life. You have it. <coughs> but do you do it? Do you do it? Do you believe that you can do it? Well, you try and it doesn't show up. You try. It's the same thing as the seed that you're talking about last week, which was the most awesome uh, set of those, of those teachings on the seed. You know, it doesn't happen overnight. If you want to rebuild your car engine, it doesn't happen overnight. If you want to go to school and achieve something, it doesn't happen overnight. But you continue going. Now, here's the fact of faith. <clears throat> faith does not fail. Amen. Faith never fails. Faith, it's impossible for faith to fail because faith herself actually becomes what you hope for. It always does. It never doesn't. That's the living faith. You have that. You have that. Patience. We had some great experiences with patients out on this trip. 
Uh, <laughs> patience usually cuts into some kind of some kind of realm of time where you you know just wow when is this going to be over you know and you're sitting in patience and I had two great adventures of patience and I remembered sitting in the in the embassy in uh, Brussels because my my visa going into Ghana was not uh, right and they wouldn't let me get on the plane so I had to spend the day in Brussels freezing cold I had no warm clothes at all. And because I was going to going to Africa where it was warm and I had the whole day I had to go out and do this and do that go to that embassy sit there freezing cold I mean freezing and I didn't I didn't even have a sweater what do I got oh patience oh I love you patience you make me perfect and wanting nothing I don't want any heat Thank you, patience. <laughs> it was time to make love with the word. I mean, just cuddle up and get the word. And she made me perfect and entire. Where I just, I just, I made this. I don't want any heat. I don't want any heat. In other words, I was willing to die to what I wanted for what patience wanted for me. You have power. You have power. It is your nature to have power because you're born of God in Christ Jesus and all power in heaven and earth is given unto Jesus. So you partake of all power. You have power. You have power over your body to make it do what you want it to do. You have power over your soul. To not just accept the things that are unpleasant to you. He's in you to have his good pleasure. Well, what's unpleasant to you is not pleasant to him. You have power to make a mistake, repent, and go on forgetting it. You have power over every area of the law you have power over every area of your physical circumstances. And that power comes out of your tongue, from your heart. But the source of it has to come through your mind. That you believe you have it. And I'm telling you, you are a son and you've been given all things. All power to do so as you begin to step out you're stepping out in faith you've been given power to do faith stepping out in faith what does that mean I like those words a lot of times we go and we're talking about well, do this by faith and do that by faith do that by faith and people don't get it in other words faith is I believe in my heart I confess with my mouth faith goes forth will definitely become it's there. It's not in present time. It's in future time. It can be in present time, but it's in future time. It can be something you need today. It can happen today, but it's in future time. It is definitely there. Okay? And the power of faith is to draw you to the object of that. Change your circumstances. You can change them. There's nothing limiting you to being able to change the future. Nothing. The whole world is defined by the past. They define their existence by what is in the past. Our existence is defined by eternal life. Our existence is defined by whatsoever we would say we can have. Our existence is defined by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, right now, across the world, this is a happy Sunday, isn't it? What's it called? Palm Sunday. <laughs> Palm Sunday. I forget. What, what are they doing on Palm Sunday? What, what was the deal with Palm Sunday? Huh? Oh, no, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> How about that? Yeah, I, I have the mind of Christ. <laughs> I just don't remember things. Okay, so <laughs> what was that all about? Nothing. 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 Just get on the donkey, ride in. Everybody's going, da 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 And he didn't care for any of that. He didn't care for it, except the fact he knew that he was going to go die. He didn't care for it. But he fulfilled the word, because it said, on the, on the foal of a donkey, you ride in and triumph and all this kind of stuff. Understand that none of that was important to him. What was important was one thing. Because he was fixed on what was going to happen after he died. I mean, by the time he got into the Garden of Gethsemane, he, he became aware, as you know, Father, if this is going to, if any way I can take this away from me, you can have it. And he started coming on him, coming on him, coming on him, coming on him, coming on him. But he looked for the joy, the joy that was set before him, the faith that his father put in him, that there would be a death and there, there would be a resurrection, and there would be many sons. So you're not looking just at what your problem is. If you're just looking at your problem without solving the problem, it's like talking about your friend and speaking negatively without really praying for their problem, praying to help them out. In other words, sons, we have that power. That mind of Christ is in us. Our existence as sons is power. And in renewing our mind, we're renewing it into exercising power. Start with where you are. I'm telling you, last week and last month and last year is constantly grabbing you and pulling you down to look into the future thinking that's the way it's going to be, that's the way it's going to be. But what does faith tell you? All things are possible. They are possible, but it's not wishful thinking. It's, oh, God, somehow make a way. He's in you. This is resurrection life we're living in. Not wishful thinking that one day Jesus is going to rise from the dead. Or like they do out in Christian religion. Oh, God, come down and, and, and help us. That's not the righteousness of faith. No, he's already in us, and you have the power. Start today, right now today. Look at something. Hey, look at in your personal life, in, in, in your family life, in your circumstances. Look at something and speak power to change it. Right here today, right now today, speak power to change it. And stand, realize, once you've put your word of power out, there's nothing that can stop it. You may have to sit there in the cold in, in, in a foreign country, freezing your butt off while you make love to patience. But believe me, patience is a great, great lover. She just, just cuddles up with you and just, it's going to be fine, fine, fine when the sun starts to shine. <laughs> and then if you surrender, okay, Remember, we are sons, and we have these wonderful, wonderful servants that want to help us out in every situation. And there's nothing going on down here that we can't overcome. We've already overcome. How do we grab a hold of it? Believe in it. Believe in we've already overcome everything. Everything. Nothing has any power on us down here. You know why? We're dead. Only problem you got is that you're not dead yet. When you realize that you're dead, then, hey, <laughs> nothing can defeat you. The whole world lives in the fear of death. And exercising that death of, oh, look at the problem. Look how bad it is. Oh, you're going to lose. You're going to win. You're going you're gonna to be destroyed. You're going to be this. Blah, blah, blah. So what? It's already gone anyway. So we enter into that rest. We let that spirit of rest dwell in us and live in us. And what does rest say? The works. The works of God for you 
have already been set before the foundation of the universe. He knows where you're going to be next week. Or it could be next year. But that depends on you. He knows where you're going to be after your body dies, after the cancer eats you, after, after all the diseases. He knows that you're going to be in heaven. You don't have to wait. You don't have to wait. Reckon yourself dead and alive unto Christ. You have the power, just like the power is working through many of you out in the world. That power is working through you to be a testimony to people. Talking to this little person here and talking to that person over there and meeting that person over there. And, 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 and that's, that's the power. That's his power working through you. Well, get it to work for you. It wants to work for you. Don't eliminate that part of you. Let's stand up on our feet. All right, so right now, think about something. You need to get changed, okay? Now, not changed. Oh, well, maybe sometime later it will happen. <coughs> Listen to this word. Except because they say by my, by my knowledge and by my power and by my will, this and this has come to pass. The Lord says, behold, I create now. Don't think that tomorrow is set in stone. It is not. It's set in death, but not in faith, not in power. So right now, I want you to release that power. You know where it's coming from, right from the throne, right out through you. We'll bring it down through into your soul, into your physical life, right here on the earth, right into your physical life. What do you want to change about it? And let's release it out. Thank you, Father. We release this power into our lives, into these areas of doubt and fear and unbelief, into these areas where we don't see that power working. Faith, we release you to do what all you have been called to do for us and in us, delivering us from every bit of the curse, every bit of the carnal mind, releasing us into the power as a son of God. Thank you, Father. Now, across the world and right here, I want you to just begin to believe to receive increase Increase of all of these things that have been spoken today. Release and receive the increase of those things. The increase of power, the increase of the knowledge of God, the increase of the victory over the tree of life, over the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the increase of life. Just begin to receive it right now. Just receive it. Oh, we receive your love, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't let yourself fall back down as soon as you leave. As soon as you turn off this TV or this uh, video, don't, don't let yourself fall back down into it. As soon as any kind of ad, something comes against you in any way, something comes against you, against your mind, re rebuke it. Cast it down. Speak the living word. What is the living word? It's in your mouth. It's what you desire out of your heart. That's the living word of God. Amen? God bless you guys. We'll see you next week.